that. Okay, go ahead. Super. Um, uh, well, thank you very much. I, I, I have been learning a lot, so I, I hope a, a lot of question or collaboration opportunities after this meeting and the followings. Uh, I'm Ricardo Hartle Belmar from Chile. I'm working in the Universidad Central de Chile uh, and collaborating with the Data Observatory also and a foundation which is located in, in Chile. What I want to talk very briefly is uh, why why we are doing what we are doing with Open Alex on a site. Uh, why we want to work with uh, site uh, information, and in some way, what the challenge of maybe a scholarly communication, or I don't know if it's directly them, but I guess there is a lot of challenge for the quality because we we are opening a black box at universities were related to web science scopus and they don't don't be them transparent about the processing and now we're, that we are open we are seeing the the really challenge related to um, me I am open science passionate uh, researcher medical technologies from my degree and um, post degree molecular biology um, mainly it's a talk about training and data metadata analysis and exploring working and research, uh, meta research. And all we are showing now, because sometimes some description appear the, the cost of, et cetera, open science, open data, whatever. Uh, here it just uh, intention not funded to create and show another way to make this stuff. So why? Incentives, for sure, uh, of using web science, Scopus data, Quartil, even in the accreditation system, there is a like, lot of guys pushing the, uh, even they say, uh, number of publications have to be from, or university accreditation, high impact publication are uh, expected to be well accredited. And that incentive keep people going to the classical source. And in the natural contact level, we have an open data policy. We don't have an open science policy in Chile. The use of persistent identifier is not common. And we keep relying on was Scopus kind of searching without using open persistent identifier. And also there is a challenge between consortium. I guess uh, in Chile, we got a consortium archive also data side, et cetera, but most of those activities sometimes are only for the members, but there is a lot of people working outside the member community because they got open API. So I guess that's also a challenge for the ecosystem. At the institutional level, uh, we got a, a grant from, uh, from ANIN, uh, is, uh, Agencia Nacional de Investigación y, y Desarrollo uh, 20, uh, between 2021 and 2024 to implement a repository. But we try to go for, further than that, uh, taking the recognition and traceability strategy of Utrecht University and uh, mostly all the stuff that is going on in, in, in Europe. And right now, the project just finished, but the university created a new uh, subdirección, new DVD directorate is working in three person, three fields, and uh, specialists in data science policy and also governmental data. So I guess it's a perfect match to keep pushing even with that open science policy that we have at university. So do the open science policy, we have to give recognition and recognition in some time, in some level to everything. So we need articles, data, poster, whatever it could be traced by a PID. Um, and we published this in, in April, but even it's from January, we are working with Open Alice and openly we say we are working with Open Alice, like a primary source of information. So artifact, artifact traceability, uh, we are this is a work in progress, trying to figure out all the network related to uh, research product. But we know we have to be aware of creator, project, grant, object use, 
object destruction. The first talk, uh, Bianca was talking about resume. It is possibly to read it by matching or not. So it's a very complex network, but in ball is we got IDs with that PID. So that could be a, a perfect match for everything we need to do or we have to implement. So what is our framework? It's a very easy one and the cheapest one we can collect. First of all, we are pushing the use of PID, archive and ROR, even though we have to modify some the content of our uh, or our register to be collected by archive and also to be collected in a way, good way from uh, Open Alex. Or source of information, the internal information of the university, Open Alex site, data site, cross rep, archive, and we're playing with them just with a open APA platform. We are not trying to not use the web access just the APA. So it's a big, sometimes difficult because the output is not always the same. I mean, some platform gives you a nice JSON, but it's not the same information that if you answer it another platform. So the documentation of OpenAlert have been super useful, but in another platform, it's a challenge to understand what the answer is. To collect the data, we're using Google Script and just using Google Tip like an, our database, because for us, it's enough. It's online and the university got a Google account. And to analyze, we're using RStudio, mainly tidyverse. We have to make some, some tweaking in the data, but everything is documented in an R file and in uh, RStudio. Uh, so what do we do with the sources? We got information from the university, persons who are belongs to uh, the faculty, genders. Uh, I put gender sex because it's not well defini defined the, the factors involved in the classification, but this information is from, from the university. We got also the I as an as, as, uh, N of GIF quartile, S, G, R quartile, et cetera, Cielo, Cielo Chile, to know if the article is indexed or not indexed, because I show you for the accreditation model in Chile or funders is super important to get this information. So we got the, the information from OpenAlex, all those variables we import through the Google script. We got different script for each kind of analysis we want to collect. We try to use the respect the the polite policy of Open Alex putting our email. By the way, we try to use that. We, we try to to keep doing that. And then we mix information from university. And for this case, we want to present you with site. So just a miscellaneous. Uh, example of different graph publication by kind of publication, uh, always using ROR in this case, uh, publication per month, faculty, gender, area, quartile, etc. And we have been playing with open Alex information from DOA, the, from DOA related to APC. Uh, which is a challenge because nobody knows who paid the APC. So we suppose and um, try to, to make different graphs if the first author, the last author, et cetera. But it's, um, I guess it's, it's, a, it's a long way uh, discussion. So the, for me was site guy itself. So he, he presented a lot of related information. I guess the same um, the slide. Well, we were working with this. Talis related to total supporting, contradicting, mentioning, and amplify um, to each work that they got the UI. So this is a, a the Garalini some presentation we did in the in Congress a few months ago related to how was what it was the use of an article published. In, or belongs to our journal in Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, and uh, in the science field. So 
we make a recreation analysis and we see that it doesn't matter if the article was Q2, Q1, Q3, when they were using, they are used almost in the same way. Um, yeah, we made, made a correct correlation and analysis. We didn't find a difference. For this time, we're just exploring to connect the data and exploring the Google script. So we managed 3,981 articles. But then we say, well, ah, I'm sorry. And also we're curious about open and close because there is always the discussion why you are seeing an article which is not open or maybe the journal disappear and we keep seeing, keep seeing, keep citing article that doesn't exist anymore. So we try to see if there were any difference between open and close uh, articles and we couldn't find any difference. Um, so it's uh, interesting for discussion. Well, we jumped from 3,981 to all Spain universities. So it's 235,000. The system worked very well using the cursor that open Ale had. So we call it in a very nice way, everything that was going on. And we did in Spain, left. using Spain data, we had no difference at all also. So it's a work in progress and it's consistent and challenge. Uh, sometimes articles doesn't it are, are not in open Alex. I mean, don't in open Alex because they don't have DOI or the lack of something related to primary or secondary inconsistent in their metadata. What else? We're trying to find this researcher from my university, which is that in the web page of this journal appear in a very nice way. We look for the PDF, very nice way. We go to Open Alex and Crossref, we got no information. And in Open Alex, no information either. And sometimes in Open Alex, they change the name. So we got Carolina Gonzalez. However, Open Alex says Carlos Gonzalez, that we know is the cost of Open Alex trying to interpret and fill all the metadata in the um, associated to an article, but I guess it's something we had to discuss. The PDF of some articles uh, related to a uh, site, this is a trend in this kind of format for PDF. However, site in this case couldn't find any affiliation and the journal declared the wrongly the affiliation in Crossref. So this article doesn't appear in OpenAlex and we couldn't find it in site neither. So we can use any of both sources. Inconsistence in ROR and archive, 24 if I looking for a university article with ROR, 36 from archive. So again, primary secondary sources is a big problem. I guess in some way we have to manage this. Crossref, some institution that give DOI doesn't declare anything. And also is a problem from the ecosystem. From data sites, don't declare license or the count of license, it's very low. And Orkai related to ROAR. In the beginning of the project, we got the Central University of Chile in English. Our name was, must be in Spanish. And also it was not associated to ROAR, it was associated to GRID. So we have to improve that to collect better data, but again, the quality of data, metadata is still uh, uh, something we have to work on. That's, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Um, and thank you to all the speakers. I'm gonna turn off the recording now and we'll go to q and I see one question has already come up, but attendees feel free to start putting some in the Q&A. Thank you again to all the speakers. Big round of applause.